The next speaker is the Honorable Ambrosini. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. The most of what had to be said about this bill has been said, and like Paganini, I do not repeat. All that it is for me is to raise a couple of concerns which are specifically relevant from our perspective. But before I do so, I feel compelled to step back and think about the fact that this bill is about structures. And irrespective of how we feel these structures have been structured, they are nothing but structures. What the rule of law does not depend exclusively on structures. It depends on the people who work on those structures and the culture of the people who work on those structures. And the culture of the people is something that we are very res we are equally responsible in forging. A member of this house uh, crossed the floor earlier and he gave me these uh, napkins, which I will preserve and return to him in 30 years. He gave it to me to wipe my tears uh, for the failure of the High Court of uh, Appeal to find in favor of the opposition parties in the case against the speaker. That was a moral triumph lost on a technicality, which accounts for the fact that no cost was awarded. We need to move away from the culture that might, that might is right, eh? to move to the culture that right is might. We need to stop, enjoy the, prince, the, the privileges of power to understand, as it has happened to this member, that power comes and power goes and the fortunes of power change and those who were once in power go to the opposition and those who go in the opposition go back in power and may go back to the opposition. The, the most important structure within the consolidation of the rule of law is the political body. Unless we relinquish the worship we have for the rule of man and we embrace the rule of law to the point we fairly and sincerely accept that no one is above the law, the rule of women. Well, Mr. Jeffrey, <laughs> let it rule as you wish. But until that we achieve, all that can be done in the, stru in, in, in the structures of the court or the court system will not be achieved. And Mr. Jeffrey, I can hear that you feel much better. We were very concerned about your being unwell, and we were hoping that you had nothing trivial, but it seems that that is not the case. We, we had reservations on the 17th Constitutional Amendment Bill. We opposed it yesterday. Those reservations carry into this bill. I think it's a mistake having made the Chief Justice who should be we should be judging in, a, in an ivory tower, looking at long-term constitutional policies. I would think it's a mistake having made him the person who needs to deal with the daily administration of justice, with the selection, as the Honorable Smart said, of people as down the ladder as registrar. The that also undermines constitutional adjudication. It draws those who should be the, uh, the wise uh, final referees of the dynamic of the Constitution within the, the re within the terrain of daily conflicts, daily administration, daily interpersonal uh, exchanges. Uh, and I think that that weakens rather than strengthens the overall system of constitutional uh, adjudication and the strength of the Constitution. But being as it may, this Parliament against our best judgment passed the constitutional amendment yesterday, and therefore it becomes necessary for that to be implemented by this, uh, uh, by this bill. And that accounts for the fact that we cannot possibly object to it, and within the spirit of Thanksgiving, this will be a, a day in which I've not been able to oppose anything, and we will support the bill. Thank you. Honourable Member, your time is